Greetings again from Brother Stephan. I am a student and witness of Yahashua Christ. To all the inhabitants of the earth, I present to you the gospel of the kingdom. If you have or haven't been following um, the gospel of the kingdom YouTube channel, I have been posting up Bible studies, and I have been I have went through the beginning of the book of Genesis and. Um, I'm going through the book of Matthew. I believe I'm at a good point. To, I want to kind of backtrack here and go back to the book of Genesis because I believe this, uh, this is a good point to add this next study. Um, if you go back to my YouTube channel, as you can see, um, if you go here to the, this is the Bible, the book of Genesis. Um, I did a study on the, pretty much in the beginning, and that's, study correlates with Jesus was God and with God in the beginning then if you go back you can see um, the first day the second day is the firmament the third day gry drown and if you go to the YouTube channel as you can see this pretty much the beginning and the first day you have the second day which is the firmament the third day um, the fourth day and I have the sixth day I had skipped the fifth day um, because there was information that the spirit have not revealed to me that it has revealed to me so this study is going to be about the fifth day and it will help you understand the temptation of the next study that I'm going to do called temptation which is about Christ being tempted in the wilderness so let's get into this study the fifth day the title of this lesson is the fifth day God created Lucifer and now like I said if you haven't seen this lesson on the fourth day which when is when God created the constellations um, this message that I'm sharing with you today is going to be a little foreign but if you um, would like if you go back and watch the lesson on the fourth day before you watch this lesson it will benefit you or when you finish watching this lesson go back and watch the um, Bible study on the fourth day so like I said again let's go ahead and get into the lesson the fifth day God created Lucifer and we're going to start this off in Genesis 3 um, chapter 1 as when the the serpent's deception it says now the serpent now what I have here the serpent does not mean a snake. I know many pictures in churches and Bibles on TV, they always show that the serpent is a snake. The serpent does not mean a snake. This word serpent is referring to the constellation serpent or what some people call serpents. And this is not really necessarily a snake. This is referred to as a dragon. Um... And we're going to prove that with scriptures today. So, when, once again, when we are in the book of Genesis chapter 3, when it says, Now the serpent, it is not talking about a snake. It is talking about the constellation serpent. And the constellation serpent is in reference to a great red dragon. So, this next image that I have here, if you ever seen this, um, this is a Chinese dragon. And this Chinese dragon to the Chinese is supposed to symbolize like power or strength and good luck for people. This is actually a representation of the constellation serpent. And, is, and it, it's, this, this is actually a symbol for Lucifer, the red dragon, serpent, the devil. So anytime you see images like this of a dragon, this this is actually in reference to the constellation serpentine and it is in and it, it is a image or a symbol for Satan. Now most people is going to say why but in the book of Genesis they will be referring to Lucifer as a as the serpent 
constellation. And I'm, in the next few verses, I'm going to share why they refer to him as the constellation serpent. Because that's not the only time in scripture they refer to him as the constellation serpent. So we're going to go jump right into the book of Revelations. And this is chapter 12, um, the woman and the dragon. Now, this um, scriptures that I'm about to go over about the woman and the dragon, I have went over these scriptures already in other Bible studies also. And those Bible studies I have here is God's covenant with Abraham. And it, also, and it talks about September 23rd, 2017, which is in reference to Revelations chapter 12. And also the signs and birth of Emmanuel. So if you want to know even more about how the scriptures um, are in reference to constellations, um, you have to go back and watch those studies. Remember it said in the beginning when God created the stars, he said let them be for signs. And that's why you see so many scriptures in reference to constellations because God created them on purpose for signs such as these that we're even going over today. So Revelations 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. This great wonder in heaven means a signs in the constellations. A woman, the constellation Virgo, clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. This is the constellation Leo, accompanied with Mars, Mercury, and Venus. And she being with the child, as you can see in the legs of Virgo, there is Jupiter in between the legs of Virgo. So she's being with the child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to, and pains to be delivered. Now the, the, the unique thing about this scripture and this um, certain signs in the constellation is there is a lot of software out there now that you can use and you can go back in time thousands of years the constellations are basically recorded not only are they recorded but the software you can also go in the future with the software and see how the stars and everything will be set up in the future so this particular sign, one of the things I know is I have, I have this red line here, because if you can notice, all of these um, planets that's in orbit, that does not move like constellation moves, as you can see, they, in this, they make a straight line. And this sign has never appeared before, and it will never appear again. And this, and this happened on September 23rd, 2017. Now, to get back to the constellations serpent. If, once you finish that, when you go to Revelations 12 and 3, it says, And there appeared another sign in the constellations. And behold, a great red dragon. This is what, I, this is what I, we just referred to you. Just told you back here when, it, when I said that the constellation serpent refers to a great red dragon. Now we're here in Revelations um, 12 verse 3 and it's telling you again and there appeared another sign in the constellations and behold a great a great red dragon having seven heads this is talking about the seven stars that makes up the constellation serpents and that's one two three four five six seven you probably can see that a little clearer in this picture here so those are the seven heads that makes up the serpent. And it says, and seven crowns, Corona Bolus, this is the constellation Corona Bolus above the head of the serpent. And that's here. So you have the seven stars and the um, seven stars that make up Corona Bolus, the crown above his head. Like you, said, you cannot make this stuff up. Um, the script, these scriptures are referring to the constellations and they're and, and like you say even when you go back to the book of Genesis say let them be for signs these are some of the reasons this is the reason God put the constellations in the sky like I say go back to those other studies that I showed you earlier which is God's covenant with Abraham the signs and birth of Emmanuel and also the fourth day <clears throat> so we continue reading upon his head and his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven. I, the spirit has not revealed to me 
exactly what this means and if the spirit hasn't revealed exactly what it means to me a lot of times i just don't want to share it because i don't want to confuse anybody so i didn't hear but we'll continue reading and it said and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman this is the dragon remember see it refers to this the, the it refers to the constellation serpents as the dragon because it stood before the woman which was ready to deliver which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born so this is referring to the constellations and as you can see they call the constellation serpents also the dragon a great red dragon I want to skip a few scriptures and I'm going to go down to Revelation 12 which just talks about a war in heaven um, in verse 7 it says and there was a war in heaven Michael and his angels fought against the dragon talking about that the serpent and the dragon fought against the angels and prevailed not neither was their place found any more in heaven and the and the great dragon talking about that great red dragon was cast out that old serpent this word old serpent is referring to you say old serpent because it's referring to the book of Genesis chapter 3 when it says the serpent and that serpent and dragon means the same thing they can be interchanged at any time because they they mean the exact same thing but what most people do when they read the word serpent they think of a snake this is not referring to a snake it is referring to a dragon called the devil and Satan which deceived the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angels was cast out with them now the reason I have a picture here of a, a, a red dragon because if you go back to Genesis when it talks about the serpent in the Garden of Eden tempting the woman it is not talking about a snake this will be a more appropriate picture than a snake because it was a dragon that deceived the woman that talked her into eating the fruit a dragon and we're going to talk more about the dragon in this lesson but it was not a, a reptile snake it was a dragon with wings with legs with arms with head so um we're going to go to ezekiel chapter 28 verses 13 through 16 and it says thou hast been in the garden of the garden of god this is talking about the garden of eden when satan um tempted the woman to eat of the fruit this happens in the garden of eden these scriptures are in reference to um, lucifer or the serpent or the red dragon say thou hast been in the garden of, in the garden of god um I, I scratch this out because it's not that important but i will get back to it in a little bit just about every precious stone was thy covering i have a study let me pull this study up really quick I have a Bible study here and this Bible study right now is just titled Satan um, I don't know when I will ever post this study up because um, the study is pretty lengthy as you can see it's um, 30 pages long already and basically in this study I go through all the scriptures from the book of Genesis through the book of Revelations that talks about Satan and um, this lesson have a lot of details in it um, going through this lesson you will understand who Satan was in the beginning who he is in the end who's he, who, who he is right now in this day and time um, but one of the things I just wanted to point out is when he said um, every precious stone was like covering I have a picture just here of these stones so you can see what those stones look like and we might refer back to this study we might not but like I said I have a full 
study on Satan already. I just don't know when I will post it, when the Spirit will lead me to post it. But it's very in-depth, even in regards to end-time prophecies, who the seven heads are, who the beasts are. Um, I believe the Spirit has revealed all of that to me, but I have not just been led to post this study yet on the YouTube channel. So we go, so we go back to the study here of the fifth day. God created Lucifer. Um, so it says, um, Thou hast been in the Garden of Eden. It says, The workmanship of thy tabrets. Um, this word tabrets means instruments. And instruments are for producing musical sounds. It says, And thy pipes. Um, like, you all know I study, I've shared how I study Hebrew and how I translate this word pipes if it was translated to a modern day English would be pan pipes and what you say most people go what are pan pipes pan pipes are the vocal organs in birds so he's telling Satan that has been in the garden of Eden the workmanship of thy instruments your sound and your pan pipes was created in thee the day you was created. So Christ lets us know that the serpent is a dragon, a great red dragon, and in him is the organs or the pan pipes of a bird. to continue reading Genesis chapter we're in Genesis this is Genesis chapter 2 verses 1 to 12 um, I have this scripture in here in reference to it's, it, it the scripture says was prepared in thee the day that you was created so the reason I have this verse here because thus it says thus the heavens and the earth was finished and all the hosts of them and on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. So, when it's, when it's referring to um, what's prepared in thee, the day that thou was created, this is referring to the first six days of creation. So, Satan had to be created within the first six days of creation. But we're going to figure out exactly what Satan is so we can figure out exactly when he was created. It say, um, this is back in Ezekiel. We're going back to Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 14. Now remember, this is talking about the serpent. It say, thou art the anointed cherub. So the serpent that's in the beginning that is deceiving Eve is an anointed cherub. So you have to ask yourself, is an anointed cherub a snake? And we know an anointed cherub is not a snake. We know we know if one thing we know about cherubs, we know that cherubs fly and that cherub have wings in scriptures. A lot of people refer to cherub as angels. And we know a snake is not an angel. So by knowing that, we know again that this word serpent is not referring to a snake. So here it says the serpent is an anointed cherub. Now I have in parentheses here dragon. And the reason I have dragon here is because... <clears throat> The word cherub is just foreign to most people. We don't use words like cherub or cherubims today. But if you want to try to visualize what a cherub is from the Old Testament and in the book of Revelations, all is it, it is referring to as what we call in modern day English a dragon. And this is why Satan is referred to as a great red dragon in the book of Revelations. Because a cherub and a dragon is the same thing. So again, he say, thou art an anointed cherub or dragon that cover it. Um, example, so if you ever read about the Ark of the Covenant, when they had two cherubims of pure gold on the Ark, 
these cherubs was dragons. They was not people with wings. And we'll get into that a little bit more in the lesson. But they were dragons that was on the Ark of the Covenant. It says, and I have set thee so. You was upon the holy mountain of God. You have walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. You was perfect in all your ways from the day that you was created. And once again, you go back to the book of Genesis. Every time God created something, he said, and it was good. So with, with the day that he created Satan, at the end of that day, he said, it was good. Everything is perfect. It says, until iniquity was found in you. Verse 16, it says, by the multitude of thy merchandise. Um, I will get into this once I get in. If I ever post the study that I have up about Satan that I just showed you here. I will get into what does it what the scriptures mean when they say the multitude of his merchandise. I don't want to get into it in this lesson because it's a very lengthy subject. But just a quick reference, if you go back to those scriptures, it will say every precious stone was thy covering. This these two things mean the same thing, the multitude of his merchandise. And it say, They have filled the midst of thee with violence, and you have sinned. Therefore I will cast you as profane. Out of the mountain of God, I will destroy you, O covering cherub or dragon, from the midst of the stones of fire. <clears throat> now, I want to jump to Ezekiel chapter 1. This is a vision of the four cherubims or the four dragons. And the reason I want to go here because it actually gives you a description of what Satan and other cherubims look like and we're going to go over those scriptures so we can see what they look like And we're going to start in Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 4. It says and I looked and behold a whirlwind came out of the north a great cloud and a fire enfolding in itself and a brightness was about it and out of the midst thereof as a color of amber out of the midst of the fire now these this verse here is in reference to why he said, O covering cherubim, I will destroy you from the midst of the stones of fire. It is referring to the to the stones of this fire right here. And the reason he said, I will destroy you from the midst of the stones of fire, he said, I will destroy you from amongst the other cherubims. Because Satan is not the only cherubim. So um, when you say out of when he, when it talks about this whirlwind and this fire, this is the um, the stones of fire that God is referring to that He will destroy um, the serpent from. Verse five. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. These four living creatures that came out of the fire are the are the four cherubims or four dragons. Now just like in cartoons and TV shows today, if you notice, dragons are always either a fire-breathing a fire breathing dragon or a, a dragons that are immune to fire. Fire does not affect dragons. Even in movies and in scriptures, you see we kind of have the same here. That it talks about these dragons in the midst of a fire coming out of a fire, but they are not affected by fire like humans will be affected by fire or other things. Um, they say, and this was the appearance. They had the likeness of a man. It did not say they were men. It say they had the likeness of a man. And we'll talk about this a little bit when it talks about when it say had the likeness of a man. There are scriptures that let you know exactly what it means. And I'm sorry, I'm actually outside. And a train is coming by. I hope this train is not too loud. I'm just going to I'm just pause here for a second and let this train go by, and then we'll continue the lesson.
few more seconds and we'll get right back into the lesson. All right, I think that's quite enough. So it says, and this was the parents. It said, and they had the likeness of a man. This is why when you see images of cherubims today, they kind of look like people with wings because it just said has the likeness of a man. But we're going to get into scriptures today so you can know exactly what it means when it says has the likeness of a man. And it says, and everyone had four faces and everyone had four wings. Remember, this is very important. Cherubims half wings and their feet were straight feet when they say straight feet they were straight down and the sole of their feet was like the sole of calves feet and they sparkled like the color of brownish brass so I have this here because they because in reference they said that their feet were straight and like calves feet and as you can see calf half split hooves um, and you might be wondering what this picture is here. The reason I have this picture here is because these are actually the feet of an enormous bird. If you look at any human-sized bird today and you Google an image of their feet, this is kind of what you will see. This is an image of a huge bird, like an ostrich feet. So what he was describing here in his Ezekiel, he was describing the feet of a large bird. Except for he says they had uh, like brownish brass and if the reason their feet the bottom of their feet is like brownish brass is because the scriptures tell you they walk on fire. <clears throat> so and it says and they had hands of a man. Now once again this is kind of referring to again we go back when it says the likeness of a man. One of the likenesses of a man is they had hands of a man. But look what it says, under their wings on their four sides, and they four had their faces and their wings. So, these next pictures here is to show you what this uh, verse 8 is talking about. They had hands like a man, but under their wings. If you look at an image of like a bat or any... um. This is an image of like a really old, um, like dinosaur type bird. Their hands were in the corners of their wings. And then if you even look here, even if you look at the body of a bat, and even when you say have the form of a man, they have a rib cage, they have shoulders, they have hips, they have legs. So it was not saying they was a man, it just said the likeness of a man. So it's comparing a cherubim because in some ways it resembles the structure of a human being <clears throat> and we'll keep reading it said it says and their wings was joined one to another and they turned not when they when they went when they say turn not they did not change directions um, as they as they flew in the air they flew straight they didn't change direction they weren't everyone straightforward and for the likeness of their faces they four had the face of a man. So that's another reason why they said the likeness of a man, because one of the heads that was on these cherubims resembled the face of a man. And the fa and they said then the other, the face of a lion. And on the right side, they had they and they four had the faces of an ox. And on the left side, they four also had the face of an eagle. So these particular cherubims in Ezekiel that he seen had four heads and so you can say a dragon with four heads and they and they give a description of each head and they say one of the heads looked like the face of a man and i say it was the face of a man it did not say it was the face of a lion and it did not say it was the face of an ox it said resemble thus were the four faces and their wings were stretched upward two wings of every one were joined one to another and to and and two covered their bodies so they had two wings that was up in the air and two wings covering their bodies and they went everyone straight forward whether the spirit was to go so they was led by the spirit they went and they turned not when they went they did not change directions they flew straight <clears throat> now i like this scripture here because it's, it gives a description of how they look when they are flying 
It's saying, as for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coal. Talk about a meteorite. So it's saying when they, they flew straight forward, they did not turn directions, and their appearance was like a meteorite, a fire, and like the appearance of lamps, bright. It went up and down among the living creatures, and, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning, and the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Um, well, I have this here, and I will try to pull this up for you so we can have an idea of what he's saying their appearance is like. Actually, I'm going to go here. Let's see. History. I'm looking for a particular clip that I watched before that I just want to share with you all, if I can even find it. And I'm showing you here, I just want you to look at these images of some of these meteorites because he compared cherubims as they flew as meteorites. There was another clip. I'm just looking to see if I can find it here. I just wanted to share it really quick too. Yeah, I think this is it here. <clears throat>
So the reason I showed those videos there is just to point out that what we see meteorites, he compared to cherubims as the look of meteorites. And I just have it there because I believe sometimes that when we look up, if you've ever seen a meteorite, that it's possible, just very possible, that we might be witnessing a cherubim flying. Uh, but I will continue with the lesson. And this is in coming, we're going, we jump into the book of Revelations chapter 4 here, because in Revelations they give an appearance, a description of cherubims, but the appearance is slightly different. But we're going to go over those, read those, um, and the reason I'm reading these is because as you can see, all the descriptions that they give of cherubims are the descriptions that fits the description of even birds we see here on earth for the most part. So let's read. And it says, And out of the throne proceeded lightning and thundering and a voice. And there were seven lamps of fires burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And out of the midst of the throne, around and about the throne, were four beasts. These four beasts that he see, these are these are another four cherubs, but these cherubs have a different appearance from Ezekiel. But we read them and say these four beasts. It says full of eyes before, which means in front and behind. Now what I have here is a picture of a peacock, and as you can see, a peacock, and because what, what he's describing here is a peacock, and as you can see, a, a peacock has the appearance of having being full of eyes in front and behind it says and the four beasts was like an, uh, was like a lion and the second beast was like a calf and the third beast had the face of a man and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle and and the four beasts of each of them six wings so as you read in Ezekiel they had four but in revelations these cherubims have six wings and another difference is these cherubims um only had one head as compared to the um, cherub in Ezekiel. They had four heads. And it's saying, they rest not day and night, saying, holy, 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 God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts gave glory and honor and thanks unto him, they sat on the throne. Um, they, they sat, gave glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne liveth forever and ever. Now, one of the things I wanted to point out here, we'll stop really quick, just do a quick review. As you can see, all the appearance of cherubims, full of eyes, hands in the corners of their wings, feet, straight feet like calves, um, pan pipes like birds. Cherubims are a species of bird. And then, what I want to talk about here, it says these birds spake. They gave honor to God. They spoke. So, and then once again, so if you go back to Genesis 3, when it says, and the serpent, um, who was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God made him, so God created the serpent that way, smart than any other beast, it says, and he, talking about the anointed cherub, or that great dragon, or, that, or, or giant bird, said, he spake to the woman. So now I have here just a picture, and this is to ask a question, what makes more sense? A snake speaking or a bird speaking? We all know snakes cannot speak, but we know birds can speak. Even one bird can speak several languages. So it makes sense that Satan or the serpent, the dragon, have wings, the organs of a bird, so he can speak, um, and it's some form of species of bird. So let's just keep reading so we can try to confirm this kind of with scriptures. So if we go to Genesis chapter 1. Now we're in the fifth day when God creates fish and birds. It says, And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that hath life and fowls, which means this word fowl means birds, that may fly above the earth in the open atmosphere of the heaven. If you want to know what the firmament is, you have to go back to this study that I did on the firmament. And it teaches exactly what the firmament is. 
ears when it's talking about the open firmament, it is talking about the atmosphere of the sky. Verse 21, and God created great whales. So God just didn't create little itty bitty fish. He created huge fish. And every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. And it says, and every winged bird. So everything that God created with wings, he created on the fifth day. And I have here including cherubims. And Satan, the, that great red dragon, was created on the fifth day. And we, how we know this? Because cherubims have wings. Every winged fowl. Here in the book of Genesis, they refer to cherubims as with all other winged creatures as winged birds created on the fifth day and just like he created small fish and huge fish he created small birds and enormous birds just like he created great whales that swim deep 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 in the ocean and he created small fish that swim that swims in shallow water. He did the exact same thing with birds. He created birds that fly in the immediate sky. And he created birds that can fly deep in the atmosphere. Higher than airplanes. Huge birds that we today would just simply call dragons. If, if you go back, and the reason I, remember I said here that this is the creature will most more likely fit the description of what the serpent was in the book of Genesis. Because look, hands have the likeness of a man, arms, chest, legs, even like a bat. A bat have a chest, he have arms, a neck, a torso, legs, and it said hands in the corner of his wings. And, it's, and remember, it said, and God saw that it was good. And I have this here as a reference from another scripture. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day thou was created. Now, these next few scriptures I just want to go over is just because um, I'm going to refer back to this lesson in a later study. When you go to Genesis 1 and 26, and it said, and now, after, after God created cherubims, it says, and God said, let us make Adam. This word man is, means Adam in our image and after our likeness and let him, not them, him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over cherubims. So God gave Adam dominion over the cherubim, over Satan in the beginning and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creep upon the face of the earth. So in the beginning. God gave Adam dominion over Satan. Go to Genesis 2, 19 to 20. Just read over some verses. It says, And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl, to even referring to cherubims of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he will call them. So even in the beginning, Satan, the cherub, God brought to Adam to see what Adam would name him in the beginning. Adam had dominion over Satan in the beginning. And whatsoever Adam called the living creatures, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave them all, gave all of them names, from the cattle to the fowls of the air, which include that covering cherubims. Um, Isaiah 14 and 12 and I'm going to close with this scripture here in this lesson It says how art thou fallen from heaven it Means fallen from the open firmament of the heavens. O Lucifer son of the morning Who how art you cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For you have said in thy heart I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne 
above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mountain of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, the open firmament of heaven. I will be like the Most High. And I will end that study there.